Hi kids and welcome to the part 2 of plant life. Now in the previous part we studied about the different ways in which plants reproduce. We saw what was the structure of the seed and finally we spoke about how seeds will germinate or we saw what was germination. Now in this part let us first look at how seeds will disperse themselves. Now when I talk about seed dispersal, the first question that comes to our mind is why do we have to disperse seeds? Why seed dispersal? Now if you see plants, if they grow very close to each other, then they will not get enough space, air, water, food and sunlight. So because of this, they cannot grow properly into healthy plants. For this reason, seeds have to disperse and move away from their mother plants so that they can grow healthily. So this means by which seeds scatter is called as seed dispersal. Now there are various ways in which seeds get dispersed. So that is what we will study in this part of the chapter. First is by wind, dispersal by wind. Second is water disposal then is animal dispersal then we will talk about explosion of fruits so even explosion of fruits lead to dispersion of seeds in these wind water and animals are considered as the agents of dispersal now let us study each of these one by one now with examples first we will look at wind dispersal now when we see wind dispersal, we will notice that seeds that are scattered by wind are generally small or they are very light. So only if the seeds are light and small, they can be dispersed by wind. For this, the examples will be dandelion and cotton. So we have dandelion here and we have cotton here. They have long fine hair that surrounds them. You can see here, right? They have long fine hair that surrounds them. And this fine hair helps the wind to carry them away. While there are two more seeds, such as maple seeds and drumstick seeds. If you see maple seed, this is the maple seed, while this is the drumstick seed. If you see they have two wing like structures even here you can see that this is one wing and this is another wing so this wing like structure that is present helps them to float in air so in these two manners either by long fine hair or with wing like structures seeds get dispersed by wind the next method of dispersal is water dispersal now if you talk about water dispersal, the seeds of plants that grow in or around water are generally dispersed by water. Now in this, plants that disperse seeds in water generally also have fruits and seeds that will generally float on water. Examples for these are lily, lotus and coconut. So you have lily seeds here you have lotus seeds here and you have coconut seeds here now when you see coconut as an example coconut fruit has air trapped in its husk so if you see inside this husk there'll be a lot of air trap that's the reason why it makes it easy for coconut to float in water now this water helps in carrying the seeds to very far away places so with this it is very easily scattered to very far places from the mother plant so this is water dispersal the next one is called as animal dispersal now we all love eating fleshy fruits like mango cherry and guava right now after we eat this we just throw away the seeds now this is one way in which seeds can be dispersed when we throw them away they get moved to various places and go far away from the mother plant similarly these seeds are generally hard and when animals eat such fruits the seeds don't get digested they come out through the waste and once they come out through the waste they start growing into a new plants examples for this is guavas and berries where animal dispersal is seen on the other hand some seeds also have stiff hair or spines or hook like structures which help them to cling on to our clothes or to animal fur and by this they get carried to different places now if you see the picture here you will understand if you see here this is nothing but a seed that has spines 
and it is clinging on to the fur of an animal so along with this animal wherever the animal moves the seed is also being transported the same thing if you see here this seed has hook like structures which are present because of which it is clinging on to clothes right once it clings to clothes or once it sticks to the clothes it will move wherever this human being moves so it is also being transported so this is a method in which dispersal is got through animals now let us look at the next one which is dispersal by explosion fruits some fruits explode when they dry and seeds get scattered away from the mother plant it's more like the explosion of any cracker where once explosion happens all the paper flies everywhere right similarly when these fruits explode once they dry the seeds will get scattered away from the mother plant for this the common examples are balsam you can see balsam plant here this is how the plant looks whereas once it has exploded you can see how the pod has curled up and all the seeds are released same way you see peas the next example is geranium if you see geranium this whole thing will be covered once this fruit dries up the pod will explode and release the seeds out of it the last example is touch me not this is the fruit of the touch me not once it explodes again it will curl and then it will release the seeds out so this is how dispersal by explosion of fruits is achieved Now that we know about seeds and how seeds are dispersed let us talk about the next part of the chapter where we will be discussing about crops when we see crops we say that crops are plants that are grown in fields which will provide food and other useful things to us so we will call those plants as crops which are useful to us and which we will grow in fields Now let us see some of the different types of crops that we have. First we have food crops. Now when we see food crops these are rice, maize or wheat. We have rice and wheat here which are food crop. Then the next one is called as fiber crop. Fiber crops are generally jute or hemp. Now I am sure you would have seen jute. This is jute. And when we talk about oil producing plants we see peanut, mustard and linseed. Okay this is peanuts so this is an example for an oil producing crops crops are broadly classified into three types the first one is called as food crops then we have fiber crops and lastly we have oil producing crops now all of these crops need water sunshine air and good soil to grow in but different crops generally tend to grow in different weather conditions there are some plants that grow very well when it's very hot and humid while some plants need cold climatic conditions so based on the kind of weather conditions and water conditions and sunlight we can divide crops into two different crop seasons in india we have two prominent crop seasons let us see what they are The first one is called as the summer crop or karif crop. Now under karif crop the common examples we have is rice, millets, maize, pulses, jowar, bajra, jute, hemp and peanuts. These are common examples of summer crops which grow in hot climatic conditions. Now if we have to categorize them into fruits and vegetables, the karif vegetables are onions we have pumpkin brinjal lady's finger spinach tomato garlic and gourd so these are all vegetables which grow in summer and when we look at fruits the karif fruits are mango melon lychee plum peaches and apricot in other words these are all fruits and vegetables which we will find prominently in summer season if you remember summer season only we get mangoes and lychees right so these are all that's why categorized as summer crops the other one obviously when it's summer we have a winter so the next one is called as winter crops or rabbi crops Common examples for this is wheat, barley, gram and mustard. These are all winter crops. When we talk about winter vegetables, 
Winter vegetables are cauliflower, carrots, radish, turnips, peas and beans. These you get very good yield in winter. So if you notice towards winter season, we have more cauliflowers in our market, more carrots and radishes in our market rather than in summer. That's why we call them as winter crops or rabbi crops. But when we look at winter fruits or rabbi fruits, the examples are apples, bananas, pomegranates and berries. These are commonly found in winter. Now we've spoken all about crops. Now let us see what all farmers need to keep in their mind if they have to grow very good crops. Now there are nine points here for us to remember as to how we can grow good crops. The first one is that the soil should be suited for the kind of crop that we have to grow and it must be well prepared before we sow or before we plant a particular crop. The second point is that manure and fertilizer should be added to the soil to make it fertile. Okay, without the addition of manure or fertilizer, we can't give enough food to the crop. So this has to be added. The third one is that good quality seeds should be sown. You should remember that if you sow good quality seeds, you will get good quality crops. If you sow bad quality seeds, then you will get bad quality crops. The fourth point is that crops should be given the right amount of water at the right time okay so this is very important you just can't water it how much ever you feel like at whatever time you feel like you must give right amount of water at the right time for you to get a good crop yield the next point is that crops should be protected against diseases insects birds and small animals insecticides and pesticides we can spray to get rid of insects and we can have scarecrows that scare birds away and we can get rid of other animals by making sure that they do not enter. But if we don't spray such things, then grasshoppers and locusts and other insects such as plant lice will come and damage our crop. So in order to prevent these, we must protect our crop. The sixth point is that we must put proper fencing to our fields so that the animals that feed on grass don't come and eat up all our crops. The seventh point is that unwanted plants which are called as weeds must be removed from time to time. If we don't do that, then weeds will eat up all the nutrients that our crop needs and our crop won't grow but the weeds will grow very nicely. So that is why we must make sure that weeds do not grow and we must pluck out all of these unwanted plants. The next thing that farmers have to keep in mind is that the harvested plants must be protected from moisture, from insects and small animals. By small animals, I mean animals like lizards and rats and rodents. Okay, so what happens is if there is moisture and if we don't store the crops in a dry place or an airtight condition, then moisture will spoil the entire harvest by allowing the growth of fungi and bacteria and all the food crop will get ruined. That is why once they are harvested, first we have to protect it from moisture, insects and small animals and then it must be stored in a dry place or in airtight containers. These are the nine points that farmers need to keep in mind before they grow good crops. So with this, we complete this chapter. Let us do a quick recap of what we studied in part two. We spoke about a dispersal of seeds. Firstly, when we spoke about dispersal of seeds, we saw that dispersal of seeds can be achieved by wind dispersal, water dispersal, animal dispersal and explosion of fruits. In this Remember what I told you, wind, water and animals, what are they called? They are called as agents of dispersal. Okay, so wind, water and animal are called as agents of dispersal. Then we saw what were crops and we saw the types of crops. Under types of crops, we studied two types. The first type was summer crops and the second type we saw was winter crops. Lastly, we spoke about the conditions required for good crops to grow. 
So with this, we complete this chapter. If you have any doubts, please get back to us and we will reply to all your queries. Please share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.